Well, here we are with the uh, transparent voxel engine finally working. Um, I've had plans for doing this with a two separate buffers for um, the solid voxels and then another separate buffer for the transparent voxels. And both of those have a depth buffer as well. So that um, something like this, like there could be multiple um, entities with uh, transparency on top of each other and they would all render together correctly because one of the depth buffer buffers would be dedicated purely just for the voxels that have some transparency to them. So uh, let's take a look at this. This is pretty cool because um, uh, we can go and change, for example, the level of transparency here on the fire. If we make this really tiny, let's put it down to even four. We'll see a really nice soft transparency going on with this fire. So there you go. You can definitely see through that. So it's really cool to have this working, you know. Um, let's take a look at some of the code. Basically what I started to do was, um, I started by having multiple different buffers. So before this was just one Cocos 2D sprite with, um, with a render texture um, that was for the screen and then another texture for the entire, uh, battlegrounds or arena. Uh, but I made all these arrays. So then now they, there's this like two buffers and every one of these has a, um, its place in all these arrays. So, and then there's also a draw sprite, which is uh kid Fu's version of sprite to control the node and things like that. Um, and basically, uh, I got it to work. But um, I can never quite get it to work with two different PBOs. So with two different like screen textures work working at the same time, rendering into separate PBOs, but somehow the textures didn't quite work. So I found an alternate way to do this. Basically, when um, let's go, let's see, update buffer. Um, this is where it basically is copying the data from CPU memory and all this, all the all the voxels for, well, the rendered voxels for the entire Battlegrounds are copied into just a small portion of it where the screen is. Um, but now we've got an alternate method of copying data where you can pass in another texture, which is sort of like the overlay texture. So while it's copying some of that uh, entire arena's texture into the screen texture, it's also overlaying um, the transparent voxels. So this method actually takes longer than I would like. Um, basically, texture copy data used to be at around 400 milliseconds. Now it's sometimes up to 600 milliseconds because this memad function I'm using here is quite expensive. Basically, what it has to do is it has to cop. It has to add two memories together. Um, let's take a look at that. Basically, memad just reinterprets the void pointers as 64-bit unsigned integers and then loops over that and copies the data that or adds the data that way this there's really there's no C function to just add memory there's only memory you know there's mem set which can set memory all to the same value there's uh, mem copy which can copy memory from one place to another uh, but there's no such thing as mem add which takes the sources um, value and adds in the destinations value um, and I had to basically to make this even work I had to make sure that the value of the um, color inside the transparent buffer never exceeds um, the value in the solid buffer so that when you add them together the values never uh, overflow even each one of the uh, so you can think of this all as 32 bits for, per color, right? There's a red, green, blue, and alpha. They all have eight bits. And uh, if any one of those bits overflows, you're going to see some weird color stuff going on, like your reds turning into greens or your blues turning into greens or something like that. Uh, so basically, you want to make sure that's clamped. That's what uh, finally got it all to look right. So 
that's really all it's going on. It's just basically using two different um, entire arena buffers and copying them both together. Um, I got to come up with a better way to make it more efficient. And um, I, I keep on wondering why the heck I even need to have uh, a pixel buffer objects as well as frame buffer objects, right? It's like, why not? If we're copying data onto the GPU with a pixel buffer object, why not just copy it straight into the frame buffer object? Uh, I don't know, but I'll figure this all out later at some point. There'll be some optimizations and efficiency gains in the whole system. This actually kind of is expensive right here. Uh, 600 milliseconds just to basically update the buffers. 600 milliseconds out of 10 seconds. That's kind of a lot. That winds down to like 60 milliseconds um, per tenth of a second, I guess. Anyways, um, we'll work on that stuff later. So thanks for watching this video. Hope you learned something.